Good day, my friends. May God bless all of you and your respective family members, your loved ones, your neighbors and friends. May they all be blessed through you in the name of the Lord Jesus. However, in order for you to be the blessing and for you to bless all your family members, your friends, neighbors, etc. You need to know that the curse, that the curse, which means the possession of evil, the curse is for one to be possessed by evil. The blessing is for one to be possessed by the blessing. Just as the spirit of curse is a spirit of evil who possesses those who obey sin, who obey what is evil, do what is wrong. Likewise, the spirit of God, the spirit of God blesses those who obey his word. Wonderful, isn't it? And just look, what is interesting, what is most interesting is that God gives us the power, the power to obey or disobey. The power to obey or disobey is in our hands. It is in your hands, the power of blessing or curse. Because if you use your power to obey sin, you shall be cursed, you shall be cursed. But if you use the power, the authority you have to obey the word of God, then you shall be blessed, you shall be the blessing itself, which means... If on one hand there is a curse which is the possession of evil, there is also the blessing which is the possession of good, which is God. This is how it works. God gives us the free will. We have the right to think. We have the right to act, to behave according to our lusts or personal desires, the heart or intelligence. It all depends on us. We have the power, the authority to make the choice we want, the choice of the life we want in future. What I plant today, I will reap tomorrow. I have this power. I have the power to choose to plant the good seed or to plant an evil seed, a bad seed. Only I have this authority, especially when we become adults. When people become adults, they have the right to choose the blessing or the curse. And God places it at the disposal of all human beings, whether Catholics, Christians, Buddhists, Jews, whichever religion one may have, it doesn't matter. You can be whatever you are. You may be a good or a, a good person or a villain. You can be good or evil. You can be whatever. It does not matter. If you obey sin, you will reap the fruits of sin, which are the curses. You will be cursed. You will be cursed. If you choose, you choose to obey the word of God, what is righteous, what is true, then you will reap the fruits of justice, which are the blessings. You will be a blessing. So in your hands is the authority to be blessed or to be cursed. It only depends on you. It is clear. You can see, for example, that when the children of Israel 
entered the promised land. There were two, and there are two mountains in the promised land in Israel, two mountains which are witnesses. They are witnesses of God. One is, it is called the Mount Gerizim, which is the mountain of blessings. And the one which is close to it is called Mount Ebo, which is the mountain of curses. I went there last year and with my own eyes I saw both. Mount Ebal, which is the mountain of curses, had nothing. It was completely dry, naked, bare. There was no plantation, nothing, vegetation. There was no life. It has no life. The mountain of blessing, which is right next to it, right next to it, which is the Mount Gerizim, it is flourished. It's wonderful, beautiful. God said to the people of Israel, here are the two mountains for you to see. One is the mountain of blessings, which is the mountain of obedience, the mountain of those who obey my word. And on the other hand, I have we have the one of the curses, those who disobey my word, those who walk in sin. So you have there the two mountains, which are my witnesses, that he who plants what is good will reap what's good, he who plants what's evil will reap what is evil, what is bad. And God said, the laws of God, it is written that the soul which sins shall die. It's written. You can read this. The soul which sins shall die. The Apostle Paul also says that the salary of sin is death, which means the sin, the sin is the root, is the fountain of a curse. So all those who live in sin are cursed, having money or not, having knowledge or not, be it a politician, whoever, it doesn't matter the religion that a person claims to have, professes. If he lives in sin, if he is in sin, then he is in the curse. He is cursed. And then God answers the question to those who say, how can God exist and I be so cursed, be so destroyed? You were cursed because of your sin. So a sin makes a person to be cursed. He who lives in sin is a slave of sin, is a slave or of a curse. This is the reality. <coughs> On the other hand, the Apostle Paul says to the church in Galatians, to the Galatians, that Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So this is the law. The soul who sins shall die. But the Lord Jesus made himself a curse to set you free, my friend, who has been cursed. Jesus made himself a curse. He bought your fight. He purchased your curse. He brought upon himself, he took upon himself the, your curse so that you could be free. But this great blessing, this marvel, only takes place in the lives of those who are in the Lord Jesus, not those who profess a religion, although if, being Christianity, but those who live the faith in the Word of God, who obey the Word of God, those who obey the Word of God are free from the law of the curse, from the law which leads a person to death. However, obedience is needed upon the Word of God. One needs to be obedient to the Word of God. So here is your deliverance, the door to your deliverance. For you to let go of being a cursed person, you need to let go of sinning. And once you let go of sinning, obeying the Word of God, then 
you will be a blessing. If you want to continue in sin, then you will continue being the curse itself and no one will be able to do anything for your life. No one will be able to change the situation. Only the Lord Jesus can rescue us, can set us free from the curse of the law. No one else, only He. There is no saint, no one, no one, no religion, no charitable deeds, no good deeds, no such thing as a person doing good deeds for others, no such thing. What there is, is if you obey the word of God, you proceed in obedience to the word of God, then you shall be the blessing. If you do not follow the word of God, you will continue being cursed as it happens in the lives of the majority of people. This is the great truth. And the blessing, my friend, is a right, a privilege for the obedient. The blessing is a privilege for the obedient. When a person, you who has a son, a daughter, you have children, and you see your children being rebellious, misbehaving, they are rebellious. What do you plan to leave for your rebellious children? Nothing. Is it not so? Nonetheless, many times a mother, a father says to the son or the daughter, you're doing this to me. You're misbehaving. Your children will be worse than you have been to me. And exactly the same happens. Perhaps you are one of these people who has suffered because one day you made your father, your mother to suffer and today you're reaping the fruits of this curse. However, if you want to cancel out this curse, surrender your life to the Lord Jesus, follow and obey His word and this curse will leave your life because the curse, the curse, a curse does not come without a cause. It comes due to rebellion to the Word of God. So when a person obeys the Word of God, then the curse is cancelled out because Jesus took it. He has taken up your curse upon Himself. Praise be to God. You who watches, how many night vigils, how many vigils have you spent at parties, the beach, at clubs, at bars, the carnivals or parties, street parties, wherever you spent it, but you were out of the presence of God, away from His presence. And what have you reaped from these vigils? What did you reap which was good? What was added into your life? Just think a little bit, just a little bit. Think, reason. When a person spends the end of the year from one year to the next in the presence of God, thinking the thoughts of God, what do you think will happen in the new year? What do you think will happen? That which he expected will happen. That which he one day expected when he used to go to the beaches and offer his own body to the entities, etc., etc., offering food and wine there to the entities. So the life of a person changes when he changes the way he thinks. And to change the way you think is to think change the way you think with regards to sin, to remove the thoughts of sin, to fill yourself with the thoughts of God. This is the purpose of the night visits we have in all universal church of the kingdom of God on the last day of the year, the night vigil, the New Year's night vigil. This is the last of this decade which we end on the 31st will enter a new decade 2020 so it's an opportunity for you to live the following decades with a new life however you need to seek to place your life on the altar to submit and humble yourself before the most high and he will definitely honor you indeed. I have no doubt of this.